Hi. Welcome back to a nomad tale. In this episode, we're going to focus on improvement. We will be getting attacked. We will be doing some attacking. But crucially, we want to play a bit smarter. And with that said, no long intro this time. Aw oh, yeah. So as I sit here in my system and scan stuff down, I noticed a data site that was a bit different than all the other ones I've seen so far. This is a ghost site. These are very rare. I've only seen a few of them, only hacked one of them, and got nothing good out of it. The only problem, of course, being that we gotta go get a... Uh, data analyzer so let's go try to find that we have a low sec wandering hole here and uh see if we get lucky so we found a connection to high sec in like 10 minutes it was really fast um we're gonna run to the closest station that has one of these analyzers we're gonna come back and fit it up and see if I can get lucky on one of these sweet, sweet, juicy ghost site cans. Alright, so we have got a data analyzer. And now we're gonna take a bunch of stuff off of the ship. Which will hopefully save us some money if we fail at this. So to my understanding, to do a wormhole ghost site, the cans are quite hard to hack, and you only have like a minute and 30 seconds to hack them after you decloak, right? Before the rats kill me. So, we are cloaked. We're going to warp in. Uh, I don't even know where you warp in at. Let's warp in zero and just go nuts. Let's just see if this is stupid. So, here's what we do. We're gonna start the timer now, decloak. Wait, 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 wait. Start locking these up. There we go. So we scan the first one. 20 mil, second one. 45 mil. Third one, 18 mil. And the last one, 63 mil. Okay, that was the main one. Holy shit, we did it! We did it! Get the f out of here. Go, 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 go. No, did I loot it? Oh, I looted it. Loot it. Go, go, warp, warp, warp. I'm panicking. Warp. Warp. Holy shit, that got my adrenaline going. No idea what these are. We're gonna throw them an Eve Brazel. Uh, and show you what that was. That was 100 mil. Well, 67 mil. So, obviously, we can't go by the value of the cans next time. We didn't even look at them. We just looked at the value because I was a little scared. What is that? What is this for? hell is this? 
Oh my god! This is a Titan component! We just got a fucking Titan component. Ah, super as well. Holy sh! And I guess just for fun, I'm gonna work back at 100 and see what the aftermath of that looks like. Because I would hope that they came and blew up the cans by now, right? Now... Whoa! That was so cool! They just starburst off. Wow. Holy crap, that means they're actually only here for like a minute. Because they w we watched them warp off and we knew when we left, so... Wow! That was so cool. So for gas sites... As long as you're not doing a frontier or a core... You can pretty much get away with using your PvP fit, Loki or their strat cruiser, to clear the rats with little to no uh little to no worry. We'll show you that right now. So this is the site where you will get blapped to oblivion and back in a venture. If you show up here in Adventure, you'll probably die. And I like clearing out these Ordinaries because typically other gas miners won't even bother trying to warp here to see if it's open because you cannot ninja these. So it's an extra layer of defense. Can you imagine that in real life? I mean, dang. You would be utterly lit up. What's the cycle timer on that? 2.38 seconds. Every two seconds, you're getting hit with five rockets. I mean, that's like, whew. Oh, they are here. Cool. We don't even have to screw around. these friggy frigs. Uh oh, I'm getting nuded. I'm getting nuded. Missile boats, baby. Alright, so here we have some guys that noticed I have an orca in space, and they've walked up and started shooting the boss. Careful, I don't do anything super stupid here. Trying to bubble it. Not gonna work. Hey, okay, now. Let's approach the orca. Bash it. Interesting. So we actually get to see what happens when they bash this. Very cool. I have way too many ships for me to worry about, so here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna log. And see if they commit to taking it out. Actually, I kinda wanna show that I have some tier 3s sitting around. Put them in space kind of thing. So let's do that. Throw the Proteus in here. Whip the Proteus off. We did see a lot of caracals on scan.
So notice they did run off when we brought the two tier three cruisers out. However, I'd like to think that they'll be back. The thing is though, like I just can't imagine getting a bunch of people together. Right, like you'd have to get like Dracovex and stuff. They are coming back. Interesting. back. Looks like they might shoot a little bit more. But anyway, so they're going to have to commit um, some actual high DPS ships to kill this. They want to sit there and kill 14 million hit points? It's weird to me that you'd want to do that. Yeah, it's interesting. I don't know if they're going to want to waste missiles on this. I'd be surprised. I mean, it would take a Caracal and two Dictors all day to kill this. So you'd have to assume that they're just bored and trying to get me to fight them. That's my current thought process. So what I'm going to do is just kind of watch them. Watch and wait, not interact. Because clearly they have a rather decent fleet on standby. I saw a couple of caracals earlier. Oh, oh, interesting. Oh, interesting. Okay. Whoa. So we've watched them warp to this class five, and we've also now seen them warp to another connection which I have not actually gone in, which is a dangerous 162. But I think this is a really good example of why this setup is so safe. Because here we have a gang of guys that saw the Orca. They knew it was there. They knew it. They saw it with their own eyes. It was probably that Astero that worked in, right? However, they watched me reship into combat ships and then log the Orca. And they had no desire whatsoever to shoot this structure. None. Because again, 14.25 million HP is so much. If we look at an Astro House, This thing, right, only has 3. It only has 7.2 million health, <laughs> so it has half the health of this, despite being like over 10 times the cost. I think they would have gone away even faster had I not reshipped into tier threes. However, I wanted them to be a little bit nervous about leaving a small ship around here to watch it, so that was my rationale. So I want to talk about something right now the vulnerability of this setup. It is true that you could kill the pos, put your own pos, and anchor guns, and the orca would essentially be rendered useless. However, I had heard that you can let an account lapse from Omega to Alpha, and after six months, it will be teleported to K-Space if it is Anoikis. So, if that is true, my current plan is, if someone decides to do that to me, which is all fair play, let's be crystal clear, to simply let the orca expire and get another orca and another orca pilot and just move. Just move to another place until the orca pilot ends up in case space and then I'll recoup it and that will be that. The key thing is that we never actually lose the orca. Even if that rumor of if you let an account expire and it goes from Omega to Alpha and you teleport to K-Speed, even if that's not true, we can simply leave the Orca logged out forever until they abandon that POS and then we could scan our way back in with the backup scanners we left in the hole, kill the POS, recuperate the Orca. It's not ideal, but the key thing is that we actually don't store much value in the Orca. So the Orca is probably less than 2 billion with everything inside of it. Um, of course, we could load it with loot 
and it could be full of loot at the time this happens. If that's the case, we will simply accept it and move on. So, to be clear, there are some ways to abuse a nomad if you were so inclined. And I feel as though anybody capable of doing that would not need this announcement of how to do it to uh, come up with it. So, uh, my message to anybody interested in doing that, I mean, go nuts, it's Eve, you know? You do what you want to do. End of story. Okay, now here's the fun fact of the day. You make a bookmark. You name it, let's just say, best bookmark, right? And then you go to that bookmark, try to change it. The two pipes. Look what happens. It shows up at the very top of your save location folder and there's just no name. <laughs> this is nothing here. Which is so wild. Anyway. So did you know that the nebulae in Anoikis are apparently just a negative image of nebulae in New Eden? I thought that was really interesting because you will notice that in our class 4 it's really, really, you know, like red and blue and strange colors you wouldn't normally see. So that might, uh explain why Anoikis looks so foreign compared to New Eden. Pretty cool. Alright, we're gonna check out this class 4 system here. Save that. Do a little look around. Let's see blue. I see blue. Ooh, oh. The one thing that became painfully obvious to me after my experience the other day with those guys shooting my pos is that I need to separate my hauler from my orca pilot. Those cannot be the same. The reason for that is because, if you notice, like right now, we go to Jeddah, we have to get out of our orca. Leave it sitting there. And I don't like that. Even when I'm getting gas, I let it sit there. I'm gonna no longer let it sit in space. My new goal is going to be minimizing the amount of time that the orca is logged in. The reason we want to do that is because I think people only take interest in the pass if they see the orca. Okay, so here we have a gate camp that is going to kill me. I am going to die here. Now, I have an idea. Unfortunately, it's not going to work because my cargo holds on empty. But I think there's really nothing I can do here other than try to warp off. But I don't think it's going to work, guys. Because there is a thing right next to us. So, we just have to bite the bullet and die here. We didn't scout properly and that's the end of it. So let's die. I got one point. Oh, look at that! The stab saved us! Wow, that got my adrenaline going. Holy crap. So we got quite lucky there. And that is a primary reason why we take our tank off 
and we refit to an inertial stabilizer and a warp core stabilizer. Because without both of these, we would have died there. If we panic hit our micro, we would have died there. So, these are, uh, these are close calls. Okay. So we have a new Orca sitting pilot. This guy. Let's get out of the Orca. In fact, let's just switch over to Blockade Runner. And then we're gonna go to our new Orca pilot. Approach the Orca. And then board the Orca. All right, we're sitting in the Orca with a brand new character. To do this, it costs about, I think it was 900 mil plus my own skills. So what I did was got two extractors and then we essentially trained. But we extracted some stuff that I didn't need from other characters and we trained Industrial command shipped, all of this. It's about, I think it was about 800,000 skill points for this. So, to be clear, I have no support skills. I can't use most of the modules on here. This is very much a band aid fix. In the meantime, what I'm going to be doing is using my hauler, the previous Orca pilot, to hop into the Orca temporarily just so that I can operate my compression and industrial core modules. And likewise, when I move the Orca, I will do so with the better pilot. But for the vast majority of the time, we want this Orca sitter to just be logged out. We're gonna try to only log this guy in maybe once or twice an entire day. For the rest of the day, we will Maybe use a jet can here, or a secure container or something like that. Or something else to store loot that we get. But realistically speaking, I don't want people to see this orca here. I mean, granted, if you're watching this video and you show up in my system, you're going to know I have an orca here. But I don't want the random passerby to see that I have an orca. And the only way for me to do that is to continue separating my characters further. So, to recap... My previous Orca pilot is also my hauler, and it's also a venture pilot. So what we've done today was split off the Orca sitter to another character. And the last thing we'll do probably tomorrow is split off the, well, actually it, it may not be for a while, to be honest, because it's not pressing. But we're also gonna split off the venture from this crane. So that every character is sitting in a ship that they use. That is the ultimate goal. And by having the Orca logged out way more often, I think we can uh, truly say that we're living up to our goal with this episode and that we're trying to play smarter in everything that we do. I just popped into this system. Is a... Class 5, with almost no SIGs and no anomalies, and look what we have here. I believe that's a drifter. Um, I'm pretty sure this thing, I've never killed these, I'm not, damn, look at that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this thing, like, wrecks dreads, I don't know if I'm right on that, but... Pretty sure that thing is beyond strong. So, um, <laughs> we will be leaving now. Oh, look at him. Oh my god, you see him just. Dude, he just immediately started beelining towards me. As soon as I revealed myself, he like curved. Yeah, that's spooky, man.
Daniel. What a kill now. That right there is emergent PvP. So I see this little heron on my D scan. It's got to be at this sig. I'm gonna try to see if I can scan him down real fast. See if he notices. It's like he does not notice. I don't know why that was so funny. That was pretty funny though. Guys, don't go AFK in wormholes without a cloak. Unlike in case space, where people can decloak you with a anchorable module these days, in Anoakis you can stay cloaked forever. But we're gonna try to warp to this little venture doing gas here and see if we can maybe catch some AFK or something, I'm not sure. There he is. He is moving, moving decently quick. I think we might be able to catch him. See if we can pop him real quick before he before he reacts. Unless this is like a... How is he not warping? Bro, how, how did you not warp? The heck? Bro! I didn't even scram you! I know you have a venture, but like... Stuff he had. I'm about to come get that. Yeah, I'm literally gonna send a venture to come grab his stuff. <laughs> How funny is that? Okay, let's take his stuff. Oh, do I have the safety on? Thank you. Let's take this right back to the den. Oh, wait, no, we need his body. Get the body. Very important. No clue what I just stumbled upon here. But. I think this one will get him. There it is. We are on our way. Okay, so he's at the data site. Ah, okay. Hey, buddy. What's up? Slide to the left. You better start moving, bro. You only got one second left. Uh-oh, too slow. He was active, but sadly not quick enough. He has the right idea, he just needs to keep practicing. Wait, I can't hit his web? Or his pod? Okay. Alright, that probably explains why there is seemingly a stream of new guys coming into that hole. We are two jumps from Jitta. As I continue to shuffle stuff around and go back and forth to Jitta, I took a look at the map that I used to get to Jitta today. And I saw something 
quite neat. Something caught my eye, basically. And that something is this system right here. This is a class four wormhole. The class two, class five static. It's also a red giant, right? So we're about to hop into that system I just pointed at right now. So this is that system. Uh, where's the red giant? Oh, wow. How did I not find that? So that's, <laughs> that's pretty cool looking, huh? Uh, let's do a little recon. We can actually... There's probably better ways to do this. If you have them, let me know. So we do a quick look around, we find a citadel here right away. Now, who is this feller? Okay, that's an actual corp. 66 people. Or that's one guy in a lot of vaults. What we're gonna do is take a look at their Z kill. One of 71. So they are PvPing up until today and killing good things. So, our fantasy about taking this system has come to a crashing halt. We could move here, but we would be competing with a 66 man corp that has demonstrated PvP. And I think that you will find most of these, uh, what is it? These C2 plus C5 split duo static systems. Most of these are probably going to be taken, because if you remember, a C2 has a very high chance of going to high sec, and a C5 is plugs you right into the best end game in the game. So it's going to be rare that we find one, but if we do find one of these C2, C5 splits, or even something like a C2, C5 split, or sorry, C3, C5 split. Uh, we might go for that. We might just move right on in there. Because right now, the, the 4 and the 5 are pretty much redundant, I'm finding. Having the 5 is great, but the 4 essentially just makes you go through extra steps to get the high stack. So, we'll keep thinking about that and keep, keep our eyes open. So right now, we are going to test a piece of advice I was given. That can use a corporate hangar array to repackage, go to our ship maintenance bay. We drag one of these noses in the way. Where is it? Where'd it go? Oh, it's in here. We grab one of these noses, put it in here. All right, so now it's in here. Repackage. Oh my God. So, quick shout out to uh, the Brone on the uh, Eve subreddit for teaching me that. So, I'm making a quick run to grab some things. And I noticed that there is an active camp on the Abazin gate, which obviously is normal, and they just got a really nice rattle kill. Now, seeing this and seeing that they killed an Impel which is a blockade runner on uh, the same gate. We turned around and instead of going to Jitta, we're just gonna go to Amar. And I have done this uh, also for Heck and Dodixi as well. And Wren's even, I mean, Heck and Wren's are really close. But I also, um, I also sometimes go to these alternate trade hubs when I just can't find anything near Jitta and I'm just feeling lazy, but realistically speaking, if you only have to pick up a few things, or sell a few things, as in not like a whole crap load of gas, it's perfectly acceptable to hit a Mar or uh, another trade hub. I mean, they're going to have everything you need. You might have to pay a little bit more, but better than going through a Bazin when there's an active, incompetent gate camp there. Alright, I wasn't going to record anymore, but I just found myself 
another nomad. He's in this system. I don't know if he's on right now or anything, but... So... This is the system we're in, right? And I noticed the same guy, month after month, is here getting these kills. Looks like he has two accounts. But if you click on this... Look at this. We have his Orca pilot, his Loki pilot, and... His Flycatcher pilot. The thing is, this style that he's doing... I think it works better if your goal is to just PvP and um just catch people that come in the system i don't think he's doing gas or pi but i guess the only thing is like why even bother bringing the orca in though you know why not just camp the hole with your pvp ships and then you can just run in and out you have a high sack connection why even bother with the orca here yeah if I wasn't going to get off the game soon, I would probably be super interested in camping this for a while. And seeing if I could notice some activity. But, unfortunately, I don't think that's going to be the case. Okay, we finished up that vast frontier reservoir, and we were left with 80,000 meters cubed of gas. Now, I had made a spreadsheet to look at gas, and if we pull it up real quick, I posted it to Reddit too. But there's a bunch of problems with this. Um, I'm not going to get into the problems, but basically, you can kind of throw this out. We're going to redo this. We're going to redo this, and we have started it, indeed. Now... If you look at these figures that I'm started here, they all account for a tier 2 residue loss, which is basically taking the base amount from a cloud and cutting it down by one third. Um, so everything accounts for that in here. So this is the real actual numbers, and you update this from Eve Prazel before you use this, right? So if we look at this, we actually got more M3 than we expected. We got 80,000, almost 81,000. We were only expecting 71,000. Okay, and if we take this and put it in Eve Prazel, you'll notice that we got 400 million, right? So we even got 50 million more than we expected. The reason for that is because residue, while I just said it takes a third away, it's actually kind of random. Sometimes it'll take more, sometimes it'll take less. The residue will not affect your ISK per hour, assuming unlimited clouds to mine, but it will affect how much you get per cloud, and by extrapolation per site. The other thing I've done is kind of basically calculate how many minutes it would take to clear the whole site, assuming no rats. And using that, how many trips it would take, assuming a certain venture count. Now, I am running four ventures. My ventures are using tier 2 scoops and have the good skills. So they're getting 2.66 meters cubed per second income. They have 5,000 M3 holds, okay? So that vast frontier, on average, would take just under two hours, which is four trips, which means each trip is about a half an hour to fill up the venture. Um, 
So that's pretty low. If you'll if you you'll see that and be like, wow, okay, that's actually really low. Two hours for 350, 400 mil. You know, that's uh, 200 mil an hour. It's not that great for all those accounts. Uh, the reason for that is gas prices like tanked in the past couple days. These things fluctuate like crazy. Which means it's almost inappropriate to go and sell your gas right away. You almost want to rely on your trader to s strike when the iron is hot, to sell them when there's a lot of demand and high prices for it, rather than just sell it all the time. Because for example, like this is normally 10K, which would like, you know, add a bunch more to this. 32 was like 8K before, I think, something like that. So that would uh, add a ton of value to this cloud. This would be closer to like 600 mil, right? And that would be suddenly 300 mil an hour, really good. So it kind of depends on when you sell it. But the lesson to learn here is that um, you really want to look at your gas sites. Assuming you're out here doing this full time with a bunch of accounts, you really want to look at how much gas you get per site, how long it takes, how many trips, because each trip adds a little bit more danger to it. How long it takes adds more danger to it, and this is the reward you get for the risk. So these are very important figures that I use to determine what I feel like doing. I'm going to fill these out for the rest of the sites, and eventually post this whole chart when it's done in the description of this video. So one absolutely huge benefit of getting our Orca Pilot on a separate account is the fact that we no longer have to store the crane inside of the orca at all times. A crane takes up half of the ship maintenance bay. So we have about 300,000 M3 to work with. Before we had about 100,000 because we had the Loki plus the blockade runner. Now we have all this space, so what are we gonna fill it with? Well, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that we need to bring more PVP tools out here. Uh, the one that is been screaming at me in my head is I need a bubble ship out here. I need a Dictor or a Hictor. So we're going to put a Saber in here. Um, and then we're going to still have room for other ships, other exciting ships to put in here. What they are yet, I have no idea. I'm thinking possibly something like a Magus. Where is it? I took a couple skills out, but I can still fly this really well. Something like a Magus could go in there, or a Sveeple. Basically, fun ships that people want to fight that allow me to do cool things. We're going to fill this with them, and then we're going to have a bunch of PvP tools on our main. So here's a little situation that is kind of interesting to think about. So we just scanned our way through a chain. I'll show you that now. From our home here a C4 to a C3, and this C3 gets us to high sec, right? Um, however, this we're in the C3 now. If we look at this wormhole, it is the high sec connection, but it's end of life. You can see by looking at it, right? So, typically this would perturb me. I would be like, okay, well, this connection's unreliable, blah, blah, blah. However, if it's high sec in particular, you can actually just not even care. You just scan down the whole system, make sure you put these in Pathfinder, and then if this hole pops while your hauler is bringing stuff to Jetta, the next signature will be the high sec connection, and then you just bring the hauler to the new high sec connection, right? So if it's high sec, it doesn't really matter. If it's low sec or null sec, generally speaking, I don't screw with the EOL holes because, um, you know, low sec is huge and null sex even bigger so just a little quick thing to think about you see a route like this to get the jetta and back and you see you have to go through abazon or a bunch of other low sex systems always do this first click it go to safer and check how many more jumps it is for us it's only one more jump each way so instead of messing around with a bunch of low sec gankers or pirates, I suppose, would be the proper terminology. We can instead spend two extra jumps and do it pretty mindlessly. Pretty good trade-off.
Okay, that is just ridiculous. There's a guy ratting in a Varger at this site. What the hell? I mean, I don't have the kit to kill a Varger. But... I'm quite interested in seeing what the heck he's doing, at the very least. This is a high sec exit, and this dude's out here. I gotta get decloaked. I hear just ratting like it's nothing. I did get decloaked. No, I didn't. Like, what the heck is this? Let me Z kill him. Lost a nightmare. Oh my god, he just loses bling that shit all the time. Let's see if I can get my Proteus in. Maybe there's a chance. He's got a bling fit Varger with a grappler, a scram, cap battery, bling tank. I mean, pretty much no way for us to beat him. However, I kind of want to hang out and see if someone else fights him. Maybe steal it or, you know. You know. Third party. This is crazy. I just can't believe someone would hop into a system like this with a high sec exit and just use a Varger without any hole control. That's just insanity. And I really wish I had maybe the Pilgrim. Maybe I could kill him, man. I highly doubt it, though. He cleared it fast. Damn, he's got like MTU sitting around, too. Oh, okay, he's got eyes. He's gonna come loot it with the cheetah. But I really think trying to attack this Varga right now with my two tier threes would get one of them killed. The Proteus. So I don't really see any point in attacking the Varga. Maybe when we get our third character and metagame a little bit, but it's possible we could kill this cheetah. I'm thinking maybe my Proteus can just swoop in and kill the Cheetah, get some content out of it. But lord, I'd love to kill that Varger. I can't believe people do this. This is blowing my mind. Alright, he warped. Do that thing? Yeah. Unreal. Okay, the Cheetah's here. Sweet. Ooh, the site just despawned. Ooh, perfect. So now I won't hit anything weird. So now I can actually warp to it. Let's warp 10 on the Proteus. Hope I don't get the cloaked on some random sh Oh sh he appeared. Yo, he appeared. He appeared. There he is. He cloak? Micro? Is he, is he reacting? Not reacting yet, guys. He's not reacting. Three, two, one. We got him. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Let's go. I'm gonna kill the MTU quickly. To give the commands to a drone requires you to I forgot how much health these things have. This is freaking me out. There it is. You would drop from that bad boy. 27 milli, baby. Let's go. Getting paid. If I could have killed it with those two strat cruisers, let me know, but I don't think I had anywhere close to the damage and new pressure to get through a Bastion Modulated Varger that is PvP fit. No way. No way. Alright. We'll check this out. We got one of these bad boys out here. How neat is that? Alright, so now, with the saber, we have the ability to catch smaller stuff. So that's pretty cool. Normally, we have our overview set by distance. What you want to do is sort it by icon instead. The reason for this is, it's a lot easier to tell if somebody shows up when everything's organized by icon. If it's distance, he might be here, he might be here, he might be here. Who knows where he'll show up? Oh, my drones are dying. <laughs> Oops. Let's pull them back. So I've been meaning to record this little tiny tip for a while now, but I have kept forgetting. 
If you have an orca like this in a pass or a carrier or anything that's big and you want to keep in the pass, every time you log on, you're going to land in a two kilometer radius uh, sphere around where you logged out at, just like all warps. So every time you log in on your orca, you need to reapproach a bookmark or something, whatever you use and recenter yourself and wait till you're just about on there before you lock. If you don't do this, what could happen is, for example, you might log in one day and end up here, right where my mouse is. And then the next day you might log in and end up here and you see where this is going. You might end up outside of the bubble after a bunch of logins just by chance. So it is important to remember that you always reseat your uh, capitals or large industrials each time you log in. It's very important. You always want to be orbiting the cans at just above 2,000 kilometers, or sorry, 2,000 meters. The reason for that is because if you're standing still while you hack these, somebody can come out of stealth and ram you with a micro and send you flying and then you can't warp. If you're orbiting, the chances of them catching you with a ram are extremely low, right? So try to orbit uh, within loot range, but while still being able to cloak close enough through the can. I'll show you on the last one. I just want to be careful that I don't get killed while teaching you how to not get killed. Usually try to approach them or orbit them and then stop my ship, let the micro run out and then approach it or orbit it at 1900 so not much in there skip it definitely skip cans in j space i mean there's no point in laying them out you don't have constellation control all right so i'm going to show you on this last one what i mean by orbit it and still be able to cloak only 250k in the can all right we'll close the can now here's where we're at we're orbiting at 1900 because our ship doesn't have perfect agility we can't actually get exactly 1900. So what happens is we get about 2100 meters away from the thing. And because we're orbiting, we're safe from people bumping us, or at least very easily bumping us, right? But we're also close enough to loot this when we're finished with it. But crucially, we're also close enough to, if we see somebody appear here, right? If somebody shows up here, we close the hacking minigame and push cloak. And we're far enough away from that where we can cloak up and then double click in space and uh, activate your micro, I, I was talking, but you'd activate your micro there after you cloak to get the heck away from the can. And now you're safe from the gank and you just warp off. You could also, as soon as you see somebody show up here, activate your introduction nullifier module and your warp core stabilizer, then your cloak, then your micro, then warp out. But um, there's an impel, what the, what the? That was at the. That must have been at the. The high hole, right? Get the Proteus in. 
Is this guy logged in? That's weird. Was he at the high hall? Oh. Could he be... I decloaked myself like a noob, but... Could he be, uh... Oh my god, he just landed on this hole. No way! No way! Uh, WSN, is that it? Shit, am I going to the right place? Yes, WSN. Oh, there's a Dracovac here? What the heck's going on? This is nuts, all right. Let's burn off. I'm not set up to catch this dude and they have like good ships apparently. But whoa, that was spooky. I was trying to give a lesson. Instead, we saw a blockade runner on D-scan, which is pretty rare. I'm actually just gonna orbit the hole in my system on the Proteus. I decloaked again, trying to spook him maybe a little bit. He warped off. Oh, is he at the the building? Is that it? Wait, why can't I? There we go. Can't select the Citadel? Weird. I'm gonna warp at zero. Sorry, at 100. We're gonna orbit the wormhole in our home system, just in case. But I think he is long gone. I think he warped to one of these bad boys. Yeah. He warped to that. And they pulled a buzzard out to see what the heck's going on. I don't blame him. <laughs> Sheesh. Alright, let's recuperate, go back to the to the house, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so we just popped back into this class 5, and there's a coveter and a venture. I'm gonna go to their fort at 100 and just watch for a second. Away, oh, right? There's just no way they're gonna actually go mining with sabers flying around. Oh, they're at the ICR! So, where is that? That is. here. I just saw a Tengu. Oh, Jesus, he's here. Look at that. Alright, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna warp there because if you can't warp here at 100, there's no way to kill him anyway. So I'm gonna warp, bookmark the clouds, and then get the heck out of there. Probably gonna decloak. Yeah, definitely getting decloaked. To the sun. <laughs> it was only visible for a short amount of time, but they clearly saw that. I'm gonna spook them all. Pa Look, they have a pacifier. You see that? They're ready to get me here. It's funny. So they're ready to. I mean, a pacifier is not gonna do anything against the tier 3 cruiser, but they're ready to defend that perhaps. They certainly have ships reacting to it. Pretty cool. I'll probably stop goofing around with that. It's definitely really interesting that at gas sites, you can't really warp to them. Keep a cloak as long as you go to the small cloud first. Oh, we got a bunch of Praxis on scan here. Um, where could they be going? There's only a few ways in and out of here. Looks like they're going to the C4, perhaps? They're not ratting in here, so let's go to the C4. 644, we don't have much time. Oh, there's fucking Praxis right there. Yeah, they're going to the C4. We gotta be quick. Alright, we're orbiting with the Loki at 10. I think that, or 15 even, and then with the Proteus we're going through. Not sure if they have hull control or what, but... 
Oh, they got a bubble. Look at that. Look at the bubble, yo. We're gonna run through the other side and see if this saber wants to fuck with us. I don't think he's interested. I think they're just trying to protect the Praxi. See how he just ran away? He just warped off to the Citadel. Yeah, they are definitely aware of what's going on here. So I highly doubt they're going to fall for anything since they're on top of this. Maybe I should have tried to snap that saber up. I probably could have. So I think they came from here through my system back to their class 5. That's my guess. So I have stumbled upon yet another shattered system. This time a, another C13. So I've already scanned it down. There's a couple gas sites, relic site. And uh, I think a path to high sack as well. So I'm gonna crab out a little bit. Get our crab on, man. So my ventures just got shot up by a bunch of rats. I'll let you uh, figure out which one the rats targeted. This one, this one, this one, or that one. It's a tough choice, right? One of these stands out, though. <laughs> so I found this pack rat mobile tractor unit in this system. Feel free to die. There we go. Cool beans. Oh my g what? What? Excuse me? <laughs> what? Oh my god. <laughs> Dude. That's cool. And we have another pack rat. Right? Let's go. Get the Proteus! <laughs> A sweep. Whoa. Never seen that before. <laughs> That's cool. Wow, neat. Ooh. Ooh, you see that? Oh, look at that. Somebody is combat scanning right now. That's not me. They're, they're getting closer to finishing the scan. Still have some time. Maintenance bay, board, nobody sh- oh, the probes are back out, look at that. Alright, so now we reseat you and log you out, the Loki goes to the class 4. Buzzard, yo, 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 look. Oh shit, I never pulled the probes. I totally saw that, didn't he? Coming a bit closer now. I think this is the time. I think we're gonna go right now. So fast. Fuck. All right, kill the pack rat quick. Nothing in it. Ah! Oh, I guess we got too lucky last time. <laughs> Damn, I wanted that Kikimura. He was quick though. Darn. Now we basically set up a very small bubble. Which will hopefully decloak explorers. Successfully decloaked me. It's good. Let's sit our Proteus a little off here. 
too far though. Whoa, okay. Here's a, here's a Helios. Okay, check this out. The Helios coming? Maybe we try to kill him. Let's try it. Let's see if we can kill this guy. Crash it. Back through. He's gonna probably try to take advantage of the other things. Might have missed him here, but we'll, we'll see. Nullified. Yeah, I guess this this whole game changes a lot when uh, nullification is such an easy thing. Yikes. That's okay. Alright, so today is day 21. And we are about to move to a new wormhole. So we're just going to go for it. Somebody kills us, somebody kills us. And that's the end of it. So here's our plan. We warp in to the wormhole. The guy currently sitting on that wormhole is going to cross over right now to the other side. Now, as we land, we will of course be doing that, but we're now gonna send our Loki pilot to the target hole at 10. Oh, sh some stereo on scan, you see that? Alright, well, not a lot of sense in turning around for a little stereo, so we're gonna keep going. Loki moves to the target. The orca goes through the first wormhole. And as soon as he's off, Through here, and last D scan. We're gonna go through. And now Naru is gonna align, decloak, turn a micro on. There's a Praxis on the scan. This is a cluster. Do not do this. All right, so he's off. We're gonna warp to the target. We're gonna approach the target. We're gonna go through. We just have to get him through this hole, and then we're home free. We're gonna roll through. Proteus is gonna stay on this side until we're through. Loki is gonna go through and cloak. And our grid on this side is clear. Man, that Astero on practice showing up was pretty rough. So we're gonna orbit this at 25. Cloak on. Crystallis is landing. Gotta go through quick. Gotta go through quick. Proteus goes through. Pretty freaking nervous about this. Nobody's coming through the hole. I think we did it, guys. Warp! Warp, yes! Man, that was so sketchy. My heart rate is going a million miles. I did a ton of prep for this, and it all fell apart as soon as I started moving. Oh my gosh. Oh, my heart rate. Whew. Made it. We freaking made it. Yo, look at this. New base. So cool. No fucking way. They're gonna roll one of my connections before I'm done getting all my shit out of here. Oh no. That's not good. I'm gonna have to think fast. This is super awkward. I honestly had not planned for this. Ah, oh, they're so good at the game. 
So here's what we're going to do. That's okay. No worries. Go through the hole quickly, 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 quickly. Quickly. Perfect. Now, we activate our stuff. Here's what we're going to do. Off. I have virtually all of my valuable stuff, right, in the crane now. Anything left in that corporate hangar is pretty worthless. Like 200 mil worth of stuff there, maybe. I am going to sit back and let them roll that hole. It's not like we have too much of a choice, but... What I'll do is I'll simply scan my way out, bring everything to K-Sec and then, or K-Space, and then bring it back into the hole through the C2. We definitely have enough scanners over there. Now, I think I have plenty of time. Don't have to worry about a bash. I'm gonna find another way out of here. And I'm gonna do this correctly. We'll just bring everything to low sec, collapse it all down, and spend a day or two putting it back into the new base. That was so clutch of them. I wonder what their motivation was. Just to screw with me? I mean, that makes sense. I, I <laughs> totally relate. Alright, we've waited an ample amount of time to see if they'll show up to grab that. So I'm feeling a lot more confident now than I did 10 minutes ago. I thought for sure they'd have a BR there ready to scoop it up. Alright, here it is. Here it is. For it, wait for it. Scoop. Warp. That was pretty clean. Oof. Man, this stuff's having me uh, work triple time. Woo, we made it to Jitta. Safely, we still have a crap load of stuff left in uh, Shisurin, but thankfully it's not that much money's worth, so we're going to try to get everything back in the hole. This is honestly pretty intense. I'm trying to save like 50 jumps in my Bustard, but getting through... Bazin in a DST is not exactly easy. There's just no way I'm getting through there, honestly. Brutal. Okay, so what we'll do is fight the bullet, take the jumps, all the day. Oh my gosh. That was such a long period of time, it felt like. So... <laughs> I mean, I'm not even done, but at least I can relax now. So I got my main back into the hole. The new hole. In the new base. With the new statics. And the new possibilities. Um... My hauler is still going to be tied up for another couple hours, jumping around high sec, um, but I'm quite thrilled that everything worked out, even though that was quite a struggle. Basically what happened was I wanted to move from here to here, alright, little connection there. What happened was... I had almost all of these holes that were occupied, I had them scouted with alts for like an hour. I waited and I waited and I waited and I waited, and then I didn't see anything, and I said, fuck it, pulling the trigger. I started to move my orca. And I got the orca into this C3 right here, when an Astero saw me. He saw me at this gate. And it became a bit of an issue. Because I did manage to get the Orca into the system. Alright, system is good. But he saw that. So my strategy was leaving a bunch of stuff in the home system. 
running the Orca light in case it dies, that way I don't lose everything, and then going back and shuffling everything back in like five to six trips. However, I actually had like eight trips worth of stuff here. And what they did was they brought a Praxis from, I think it might have been from here, and they brought that through my system to here, this wormhole, and they rolled it. They f***ing rolled it. So I'm left with this. No connection. So now half my stuff, half my Orca, and a lot of my ships and alts are here. My main is here with my hauler. Just those two characters. And there's a stick here with about eight trips worth of, about 80,000 M3 worth of stuff. So, what I ended up having to do was, you guessed it, I had to take this stuff with my crane boop, 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 to here. So I took eight trips from here to here. This was end of life the entire time, this hole. And I put, I managed to get everything out. And I'm left with just a stick here. And so I managed to collapse the stick and I scooped it up, no problem. I get the scanner and I get my hauler out. So now my scanner and my hauler are here. Now to get the Jetta is like 50 jumps in high sec. So I, I cross a Bazin with the crane, no problem. So we get the Jetta. Now I need to get back to Nomash with a blockade runner, sorry, with a deep space transport. That takes like an hour of high sec manual piloting. All right, you can see me doing it here in the background. It takes probably two hours. It takes so long. So what ends up happening is I get my main and stuff back to Jetta, and then they go from Jetta. To Asto. And then Asto, I managed to get my main back in here. Now my all is still in Jetta. I'm still bringing stuff back from Nomash to Jitta. <laughs> um, and it takes so long because you can't go through low sec with a deep space transport. At, at least not the, the high population low sec systems, the choke ones. So, basically what we're left with here was something that should have taken 20 minutes plus scouting into like a four hour endeavor that looks like a John Madden football play or something. It's like pretty ridiculous. But the good news is we got in here. We now have a C2 and a C5. And we're in a C4, which is low key. These are the desired statics, and we're happy. All right. This was episode two of A Nomad Tale. In this episode, we, my gosh, we did so many things. It's hard to even keep track. We hunted, we armed, we moved. We did a lot of things. In fact, I don't necessarily think this recap is necessary anymore, but I really like the outro music. So, um, yeah, let's jam out to that. Thanks for watching, guys.